Welcome back to Battle Order, everybody. Today we are covering the Sturmzug, or Assault Platoon, a type of late World War II unit within the German army that was based primarily around the use of assault rifles. The Volksgrenadier Division was a new type of infantry unit created in August 1944 in a last-ditch effort to mobilize Germany's manpower. Although meant to take advantage of Germany's most advanced small arms, the Volksgrenadiers were not necessarily elite troops and varied significantly in both training and equipment. The meat of the Volksgrenadier infantry was to be the Sturmzug, which would be primarily equipped with a new Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifle. The Sturmgewehr essentially formed our modern definition of the assault rifle, a select fire shoulder weapon that chambers an intermediate cartridge, feeds from a detachable magazine, and can engage targets effectively at at least 300 meters. These rifles were intended to be concentrated in specific types of units, such as the Sturmzug in Volksgrenadier and Panzergrenadier units, rather than as submachine gun replacements for elite troops as is often depicted. Now it is known that a fair proportion of Volksgrenadier units did receive enough Sturmgewehrs to concentrate them. By the beginning of the offensive in the Ardennes, about one third of Volksgrenadier divisions had sufficient supply of Sturmgewehrs to have two Sturmzug per Grenadier company as intended, while about 5% had one Sturmzug per company. Thus, the ability of divisions to actually form their authorized number of Sturmzug varied unit to unit and the majority did not. Ammunition supply and the availability of magazines were also serious issues, let alone the supply of Sturmgewehrs themselves. In units where there weren't enough, it could be assumed that Sturmzugs would be substituted with platoons that looked more like regular German infantry squads, with mostly Car 98K rifles based around a squad level machine gun. For the organization of the Sturmzug, we're going off the version of the Table of Organization KSTN-131V on the Grenadier Company from November 1944. This does not apply to the Sturmzug as they appeared in the Panzer Grenadiers, who are prescribed to a doctrine different from regular infantry. Both of the Tables of Organization will be linked in the Sources section of the video description. Each Sturmzug consisted of four elements, all under the command of one platoon leader. The platoon troop, two assault groups, and one fire group. The platoon troop was analogous to the platoon headquarters and was headed by the platoon leader who was armed with a Sturmgewehr. The first Sturmzug's platoon leader was an officer, typically a grade of lieutenant or lieutenant. Meanwhile, the second Sturmzug's platoon leader was a non-commissioned officer, typically a Feldwebel or sergeant. In addition to the platoon leader, the platoon troop had eight enlisted personnel. Two messengers armed with Sturmgewehrs, three rifle grenadiers and the grenade troop armed with Car 98K rifles and cup style rifle grenade launchers, one stretcher bearer armed with a pistol commonly a Walther P38 or Luger P08, the driver of the platoon's wagon drawn by two light draft horses, and the herder for the platoon's two infantry carts drawn by one horse. The platoon had one MG34 or MG42 machine gun in its weapon reserve. This machine gun would generally only be used in the defense, where it would be issued to the fire group, which would use two of its ammo bearers to man it in a static position. Meanwhile, the platoon's two assault groups were its maneuver elements, and each consisted of eight enlisted personnel, all armed with Sturmgewehr 44s. Each group was commanded by a squad leader, ideally a Unteroffizier, which was roughly equivalent to a corporal and the lowest NCO rank. In reality, often men of lower rank would have filled this billet, such as Obergefreiters, who were roughly equivalent to British Lance Corporals. One man would act as deputy squad leader. This was a junior enlisted billet and was considered to be one of the riflemen. The remaining six men were riflemen and would be tasked with using their rifles both at medium ranges in semi-auto and during close combat with controlled bursts. Each man would have ideally been allotted two magazine pouches, each holding three magazines. The magazines notionally held 30 rounds, but were typically downloaded to 25 or 28 rounds to preserve the spring and reduce malfunctions. Thus, the standard ammo load would be 150 to 168 rounds, compared to the 60 round standard combat load for soldiers with Car 98K rifles. In addition, as with regular infantry, it could be expected that one to two stick grenades would be issued to each man as well. 
Meanwhile, the fire group acted as the platoon's base of fire and also consisted of eight enlisted personnel. Both the squad leader and deputy squad leader were armed with Sturmgewehrs. The squad was structured so that the two leaders could each control one of the squad's two belt-fed machine guns. The teams could be split at the platoon leader's discretion or kept together and led simultaneously by the squad leader. The fire group was based around two machine gunners, each armed with an MG42 or MG34 machine gun and a pistol. The machine gunners were assisted by one assistant machine gunner and one ammo bearer each, all armed with Sturmgewehrs. As previously stated, in the defense, two of the ammo bearers could be used to create a third machine gun team with a platoon's reserve machine gun. This meant that the Sturmzug had the same number of machine guns in total as the regular infantry platoon, although allocated differently. In the march order, the platoon was organized as follows. The platoon would be headed by the platoon leader with the horse-drawn infantry carts and wagon, while each squad was ordered in a column. At the head of the column would be the squad leader while the deputy brought up the rear. For the assault groups, the riflemen would be lined up in between the squad leader and the assistant. For the fire group, one machine gun team would be headed by the machine gunner followed by his two assistants, followed then by the second machine gun team ordered in the same manner. Meanwhile, at the rear of the march would be the platoon troop. The Sturmzug employed fire and maneuver at the platoon level and always did so as one entity. The documents for the organization, tactical use, and training of the Sturmzugs of a Grenadier company describes the attack as the following. The fire group was to position itself to best support the assault group and so that the connection between them was not lost. The groups were expected to support each other at all times even if the platoon leader was not able to communicate. The fire group could combine the firepower of its two machine guns on the most dangerous targets. The teams were expected to change positions frequently as the attack progressed. One or both of the assault groups could be used in the attack. If an assault group was not acting as a rear or flank guard or as a reserve unit for a follow-on attack, the squads could be used to carry out a pincer attack. Its riflemen were to carry out simultaneous automatic fire at close ranges and on the move to overwhelm the enemy. Meanwhile, in the defense, the assault group could act as a counter-attacking force under the cover of the fire group. The grenade troop would generally follow the assault groups to support the assault or remain with the fire group and provide longer range support. They were to be employed against enemy positions where indirect fire was required when positions could not be engaged by the assault or fire groups. In theory, the lack of an integral, dedicated machine gun was partially mitigated by the new automatic firepower of the Sturmgewehr and allowed them to be more mobile. By contrast, if a regular German squad lost his machine gun, that squad essentially became useless. Thus, the Sturmgewehr provided the Sturmzug with an ability unique within the German army. However, the majority of Volksgrenadier units were not able to be equipped in this way by the end of the war, and it most likely would not have made an appreciable difference even if they had. Thanks for watching everybody, and thank you to our Patreon contributor. If you are interested in supporting our content and want to get credit in our videos, among other things, you can become a patron on Patreon. Link for that is in the description. Thanks again, and see you all in the next one.